Hi, it's repair and teardown time. Check out this bad boy. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these ESD guns. This is a Haffley uh, Trench PESD 1600 ESD gun. It's a 16 kilovolt uh, gun and it comes with um, it, interchangeable tips depending on which uh, standard you want to uh, what type of product you're testing and uh, the, you know various standards and things like that and these things are usually in the if you have to ask the price you can't afford it category and I've been wanting one of these things for years I've had it on my eBay watch list but I finally got one and this was sold as faulty but I'll link it in up here and down below. I've done an exclusive unboxing video and testing video of this uh, over on the evlog.com website or on my uh, Patreon as well. You can uh, check that out. Anyway, so I'm not going to uh, fire this thing up today, but the problem with this thing um, is it, it turns out it does actually work, but this uh, inco voltage encoder uh, knob here. It's not actually a pot. It's a it's a rotary encoder uh, knob. It only works one way. So it only goes down. It doesn't go up. So I can't turn the voltage up or I can't turn the count up or whatever like that. So anyway, yeah, ESD. Zappy, zap, 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 zap. Um, don't try this at home, kiddies. But uh, yes, it comes with the uh, external uh, power supply and the big ass grounding strap. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> they used a ribbon cable for that anyway uh yeah you got to ground the thing but uh yeah so let's take it apart and uh see what's what oh and it's got a uh, battery in it as well um and that is uh dead ski so i don't know what type of battery but um it does work from the external uh supply so yeah so calibration is already void on that one but the other ones are actually uh intact so i assume somebody's just um that's just wear normal wear and tear on that so anyway there's the uh, regular DC input but uh, yeah like this is not a new uh, model they don't sell this uh, anymore the new one is the uh, Onyx or something um, I'll put a photo up here but uh, yeah once again um, it, these are in the five digit price category and even second hand they're like mid four digit price category but yeah I get the god got this one for well well under that because it was sold as faulty anyway let's rip it apart and I have been thinking about and I have investigated uh designing my own ESD gun um, I'm still looking into that but this will provide a nice reference if I go ahead with that is there a that's just plastic I don't what's going on there um Oh, I, oh, look, oh, is that like a plastic, oh no, it's a, um, one of those screwdriver flathead jobbies. Yeah, they're, oh, plastic screws, okay, yeah, of course, because you don't want metal screws in this, because, well, you could come a gutter with the user, actually, um, you know, this thing is, uh, up to 16 kilovolts, and you can get, they've got other models, which go into, like, uh, 20-something, uh, kilovolts, so, yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. So that actually makes sense. Use plastic screws. Oh, trap for young players, that one. That one's actually not coming out. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Anyway, uh, Haffley, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, Haffley, I don't know, Swiss viewers, leave it in the comments down below. How is that actually uh, pronounced? Um, they're one of the leaders um, in, they're one of the big names in the ESD gun market, but they mostly do like really high end, high voltage like uh you know substation testing equipment they do ears like impulse testing equipment all sorts of stuff um even the second hand stuff on ebay some of their gear goes for like 20 30 grand something like that it's just yeah it's crazy so anyway oh that one's longer okay by the way if you want to have a look at the uh head on that one there you go we've got a uh output resistor on that the other one's not actually connected it's just the uh single uh output there so to the other connectors there just for you know uh physical mounting okay there we go there we go we're we're opening up i have i've had it off for many hours so it should be safe enough but I'll be careful. Don't, I forgot the uh, four screws on here. Looks like uh, the panel's going to... Oh, actually, I could probably just get the panel out, and that'll probably just lift out, and I could probably change the pot. <laughs> Didn't think of that. Self-tappers into plastic there, so... 
It's a bit, oh, one of, the, one of those is busted too. Oh. So yeah, these things aren't designed for mass uh, production, hence the, uh, you know, the power supply on this thing is just built into like an off-the-shelf case kind of thing, like there's nothing, <laughs> like, you know. Um, yeah, they're a, they're a low volume thing. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, beautiful. We've got big spaces like that. And we're in, aha, uh -huh. we've got our NICAD battery pack there by the looks of it. So there's nothing else in here. And the other connection, as I said, is not connected uh, at all. So there's a couple of big standoffs there still. Oh, <laughs> that was another, that was another one, <laughs> another screw in there, which I, uh, totally miss so i'm gonna screw that back on there like that but there you go we're in and uh of course you're gonna have a big high voltage one of the main things in this is well you're gonna have big storage capacitor so it'll be you know 150 picofarads or whatever standard uh, storage capacity you have and oh look yeah yeah there we go that's what i expected it to be all potted away and there's the custom high voltage relay in there in fact they've got a couple of them because this one can actually do positive and negative polarity so it's got to actually uh flip the, the polarity in the thing um and of course uh, yeah there are standards uh for the pulse shape they are looking to design uh, your own and that's what i was looking at so anyway um this won't be a reverse engineering i won't go too far into this but uh not sure of the date code on this it's you know like early 90s maybe so you know it'll have an early 90s 90s micro in there it's all through hole uh stuff so and then we have our high voltage uh, power supply board here and that'll be uh adjustable so that'll have some opto coupler uh feedback and they'll be able to get that and then it looks like um yeah that's our switching and this is the output uh, pulse network so like you can actually get different uh like size capacitors and pulse uh you know rcl uh networks in these things um designed to you know uh, do the specific uh pulse shape for a uh specific uh standard but anyway um so that's all potted yep yeah it's all potted there's nothing doing there so i don't know let's get this top board out and see what we can do uh, so we've got the knob off there yeah that just pulls off and uh We've got a, oh, that's a metal plate there. That's nice. So looks like I'm going to have to get the whole thing out. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, the ground connection, don't know. That's not going to help if I get get that out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. Um, this is all sort of oh it's actually right it's actually uh soldered in over there so i'll undo that god that's annoying right down in there one of the wires is uh, that goes to ground there is actually covering that screw that's really annoying geez these things are really jam-packed so there's the battery pack that i've got to replace and uh oh yeah there you go all in series looks like it's got a uh, temp sensor in there that's really rather nice so so yeah no worries i'll just uh reassemble it with a um suitable uh nicad uh pack although yeah i don't have a tab welder i i do have a tab welder kit but i've never built it so oh is that a fuse in there i think it might be and the lcd just pops out of there standard uh hitachi chipset uh and is a sharp jobby look at that made in japan all the best stuff's made in japan there's no numbers on that. I, I can't see anything at any angle. Um, it, <laughs> they've completely neutered that. Or well, they've ordered it blank from the manufacturer. I'm going to have to get different angle lights on that, but I can't, I can't see anything. Unbelievable. And yes, I have checked that there are no uh, residual uh, capacitor voltages on this uh, board here or nothing uh, feeding back out here. So no worries. Um, but yeah, this is really quite convoluted design it's oh, it's just re really annoying construction not only to uh, assemble but to repair as well no i definitely have to desolder that otherwise this board ain't coming out <laughs> unbelievable the more i look at this uh the more i think what the photon um how do you get this 
part, like, I'm looking at this metal plate here, right? It looks like there's a tab down there which has to be desoldered, tab up there which has to be desoldered, and then all the wires are directly soldered in there with hardly any room, you know, like, hardly any room whatsoever. Maybe if I get those desolder those tabs, but I can't really get in there without, like, burning all the plastic and everything. So it looks like I'm going to have to get out the grounding nut here, but also the grounding nut over here, and then, like, lift this whole assembly out so then I can, easily, like, more easily get access to the solder here and here. But once this board's out, okay, there is a board-to-board -board interconnect down in there, so this should just come apart. But then you've got this metal plate here with these, like, plastic holders, like, plastic things on them. Like, they're not spaces, they're like, I don't know, something that holds them in there. And I don't see how, like, I can just get that plate off. It's almost as if, like, to get that pot out, I've got to, like, desolder all of the switches? Like, that whole assembly? I've got to, like, desolder just to get out the rotary encoder? Like, I, that's what it looks like. Um... I oh, ugh. I was able to get the nut out of there and sort of like this looks like it might thread its way out. So this is all like everything soldered into place like after this is all assembled. Like, uh, you know, the high voltage output connector, it's all like you can't unscrew that and get it off. You've got to, you've just got to unsolder everything. So. This is just, ah, oh, this is really freaking annoying. I think this screws out. It doesn't seem to push. It seems to be like the only way it's sort of like coming out. So I, I don't know. Without getting this stud out, I can't get the, uh, the metal work out because it's wedged in between the plastic here. This thing's just, wow. Wow, this is a masterclass in how not to design a product. I, I, no, it does have a thread there, so maybe I could maybe I could spin that around. But ah, oh, yeah, please, please do not design your products like this. This is just ah, oh, unbelievable. Wow, not only like for assembly, but for if you ever have to repair this thing. I mean, you know, mechanical switches, encoders, and stuff. That you might want to fix because these are like long uh, high value like long-term products and you might have to uh, repair them like this because they're worth what oh yeah yeah it's it kind of yeah it's not it's not a threaded insert in there but there you go got the damn thing out unbelievable i can now kind of lift this thing out but no i've got to get in there and desolder all these connections before I can lift that out had to break the seal on the switch so all that's got to lift out and get unsolder that and hopefully I can get it out but oh damn it I think I've got the connection wires desoldered I've got the output connector hey hello 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 look at that what oh no I forgot the brown wire it goes to the ground apart from that we're good. Oh, yeah, that goes to the other side over there. Damn. Look at this. Unbelievable. And it turns out that brown wire actually didn't. I thought it went to the ground there, but it was just, like, pinched a little bit there. It actually goes right through the wiring loom and goes over to the battery pack over here. So, yeah, that's just a wire directly from the battery pack. Anyway, ta-da. We are in. <laughs> there you go that whole assembly. So now, maybe I stand a chance. We're not, this is only first step one of the process. Uh, now I've got to sort of like maybe desolder these tabs and extract this board. Get these boards apart. Yes, yes, there we go. We're in, we're in. And we have a genuine bodge up here with the cap. Look at that. And uh, there's the board to board interconnect. So now, Yes, I can get in there, and, uh, well, I'll check out the solder, make sure it's just not a dodgy solder joint on that pop, uh, pot, pot, 
<laughs> in code, I keep calling it a pot, you know, old school. This is all hand soldered too, none of that wave soldering rubbish. So anyway, I'll check that out. But uh, yeah, and uh, you can get in there, of course, and measure uh, the encoder with a, uh, a continuity tester just to see that it, um, it beeps at you when you do it in one direction. Well, there you have it. I do believe that is the pot there. They're a bit how you doing. Like, you know, I wouldn't be trusting those. I mean, it could could just be as something as simple as a dodgy joint over time there. Because, you know, look at it. Like, <laughs> look at the flux residue on these. They're not quite dry as a dead dingo's donger, but, you know, I'm going to, like, retouch those and uh, let's... Let's let's have a squiz, right? Not putting any look. Look at that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh look at that. It flowed through, so the original solder wasn't didn't flow through the via there. Oh, I should have <laughs> should have measured this before I before I did anything, but I whew. Oh, it's got that old school smell. So I'm gonna actually desolder this and I'm gonna put some freshy in there and it's more likely that the pots failed of course but you know I mean it's just those joints don't instill a lot of confidence in me I don't know would you expect more for your ten thousand dollar ESD gun <laughs> and of course you have to look at the joints at the other end uh, <coughs> the other end as well yeah these are pretty how you doing so it's just Retouch those up. That's better than a bought one. It looks a bit crusty due to the flux uh, residue, but we can clean that up. But yeah, it goes off to this chippity chip over here, which is, I don't know, it's under there. Like, I swear, I don't see a way to get that plate out. I think all of these switches have to come out. This is an entire assembly. And so if I want to get that encoder out, I reckon I've got to take off all those switches. Just like, Unbelievable. Now, what you've got going on here is it's not your usual five pin jobby here. It looks like there's at least four there, and I presume these two as well. So it looks like it's a six pin jobby. These two are grounded, and these, so I've resoldered all these. And if you notice, here is a chip. I presume that's a micro or, or something that's doing the rotary uh, encoding detection, right? So you'll notice that these are all going out to a single inline array here, and you guessed it, that is going to be a single inline resistor package because um, these contacts in here, um, they, you know, make break and you've got to have a pull up or pull down resistor. In this case, it'd be a pull up because it looks like we've got, well, presumably this is ground here, given the flood fill. This resistor across here, we're talking 20, 20 K. Okay. Is that a common jobby? Okay. Usually they have pin up one end, uh, 10 K like that. So what we can do now is measure between ground and here. And here's where I need... I'm reaching under here. I've got it mounted above so I can... Oh. oh, 18 ohms. There you go. So that's grounded. Okay. So if we actually put it on buzzer mode. So if I turn that one direction. It's not doing anything. Turn it the other, other direction. So we'll try the other pin over here like this. And I would have presumed that that goes in the other direction, but that one, that one does nothing in either direction, right? We've got nothing. zippity doo da. So what does this one do? Yes, I've got pointy, uh, I've got uh, these probes. They are spring-loaded. That one does, oh. That one looks like it does it when it, oh, no, no. No, it's kind of doing something there. Try this one. So this one does it in the other direction, but this one here does absolutely nothing in, the, in either direction. Whereas you'd expect it to do exactly the same as this one here. So I'm not sure what the outer ones are doing exactly. So it looks like 
that there is an encoder problem. So it looks like it's a physical encoder. Damn, it wasn't just the shoulder joints, but that was certainly worth a go. And you'll notice that that's uh, 20K there. So we're getting our pull up, we're getting our pull up resistor there, except when this one's usually low. There you go, five ohms. So um, yeah, I reckon, like you can't have a pin which is clearly connected to the encoder you can't have that doing nothing. So it looks like we've got a dodgy encoder, but offhand, I don't I don't recall a pin out like that. So I don't know. I'm not <laughs> maybe. I have to have a good look. But uh offhand I don't recall a pin out like that. But anyway, I hope it's not some special jobby, but yeah, I, I think the encoder's dead. I think that's fairly conclusive, but as I said, I think this entire assembly has to come off. So I think I have to deco I have to desolder all of these switches, and this whole plate assembly will pop away. I just like, I mean, come on, <laughs> bloody Murphy, bloody Halfley, desolder, hey, I desoldered all of them, and they all came out. They all came out. Look at that. Yeah. That is one complete assembly, you bastard. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Thanks a lot. Anyway, what do we got down in there? Oh, it's a 4093. Okay, no worries. Um, And uh, I date code 94. There you go. So well, it's upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. So yeah, and uh, date code 95 on the maximum down here. Yeah, so we're talking 95, 90, and probably manufactured in 96, something like that. Um. Yeah, that's about the uh, vintage I expected. All right, I got that encoder out of there. And there it is there. It's a six pin jobby. Um, yeah, offhand, I can't say I've seen that pin out before. So I'm gonna have to do some searching on that. There is no part number on that at all. So, I don't know, we're talking, you know, that early 90s rotor encoder, six pin jobby with that footprint and, um, the, well, you know, it has to have that footprint. Uh, we can do away with the, um, uh, you know, the mounting post there, but so if I connect to those two pins and I rotate that, we can see that that beeps, 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 and then this one out here will beep, beep, beep like every... Not quite, but this side over here is buggered. There you go. It's just well and truly buggered. It's just open. You get nothing on that one. So, but we do get this contact out here, which does its thing. So yeah, that contact there is buggered. Um, so yeah, I need a new, like, you know, you can't really get into that and fix it. Oh, maybe you should. Absolutely desperate. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, no, I need an identical pin out and I don't know. Well, I put it on the Twitters to see if anyone identifies it, but um, yeah, I can't readily find it. Yeah, more research required. Well, it's a day later and I asked on the Twitterverse and the EV blog forum as well and nobody could identify this rotary encoder. Nobody could identify even a modern equivalent to this pin out or the manufacturer at all. You know, some people guessed uh, Burns, some people guessed Alps, you know, C and K and all the usual uh, suspects, but um, no, nobody can identify that pin out. So it's a special snowflake. I think. Um, please leave it in the comments down below if you can actually identify this. Anyway, pinout wise, it's not your usual uh, two pin uh, quadrature or three pin uh, quadrature uh, output, um, but I think it is some sort of incremental thing. And obviously, I think this side is designed for one direction, this side is designed for the other, and this one is busted, which is why, well, it is, is open, it makes no contact inside, which is why it only detects in one direction um, at all. And it doesn't seem to be like a binary. Uh, output thing or a gray code or something like that. I think it's just a regular incremental uh, encoder and it's uh, like you just got two contacts on each side for each direction. So yeah, not not like an absolute uh, encoder or anything like that. I think it's an incremental jobby, but yeah. Anyway, um, the only thing I've got left really 
is to uh, probably try and take this apart. Like I can, I'd, like, well, I could solder on, try and figure out the exact operation of this thing, although we don't know that pin because it's open, um, and try and replace it with a modern one, uh, modern functionally equivalent one, although if it's, you know, oddball, then we might not be able to, you know, you might have to, well, you could, if you're absolutely desperate, you might have uh, might have to design like a decoder board or something that, that like re-encodes it into um, the format that the process is expecting. They little uh, heat stakes in there. So it looks like it's like, and it looks like all glued around there. I don't, hang on, I can actually slice down the side there, but, Oh, I don't like my chances of this coming apart and then being, like, it's really low profile. Um, so there's not much room in there, so I don't like my chances of this coming apart and being able to do a repair jobby inside and then putting it back together, but I'll give it a go. Like, there's no, there's no loss, right? But, oh, geez, anyway, um... Yeah, <laughs> just a reference screenshot of what it looks like. So I might actually release this video as a part one. I know people don't like it when I don't finish the repairs, but maybe a wider audience will, someone might know, someone might have seen that. Um, but yeah, Twitter and the forum, nothing. That's really ugly. I'm not liking it at all. <laughs> Um, I think we're going to come a gutsa if we try and get this out. I can try and maybe drill out those in there. It's a real interesting arrangement there. I, I don't know what the heck's going on. Surely somebody has come across one of these. It can't be a special one-off design for Halfley. I don't, like, no, come on. <laughs> Murphy couldn't bite me on the ass that badly, surely. Nah, so what I'm going to do, sorry, but I think I'm going to leave this as a part one and please leave it in the comments down below if uh, you have seen this. So I'll put it out to the wide audience and <laughs> please help because um, ideally I want a, like a drop-in replacement for this. And I thought, oh yeah, foldy rotor encoder, easy, it'll be five, uh, five ping quadrature incremental arrangement, right? And it, no worries, right? I'll, you know, physically height, shaft and stuff I might have to modify, but um, yeah, I, yeah, nah, <laughs> I, I got this bastard. Look at it. <laughs> So please leave it in the comments down below um, if there's a modern, even if you can get the original one, even if you can't buy it anymore, I don't know, might be able to take apart an old product. And obviously I can't get like another Hayfully, I might have to you know, contact them, maybe, maybe they've got a spare switch kicking around somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, um, so if nobody can identify this, next step, yeah, I'm going to have to get medieval on its ass. Although, before I get medieval on its ass, um, I don't want to destroy it. I will uh, have to, like, hook up, re-hook re it up to a circuit and scope, multi-channel scope and measure it and actually get the uh, profile of how it, um, you know, how it encodes in there and then, you know, see if we can find, like, an equivalent modern replacement and then bodge it in somehow. Anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As I said, uh, I link down below to the uh, EV blog website where I've got the exclusive unboxing and testing video of this puppy if you want to see it actually working. Because I did actually get it um, working. I fluked it, uh, like reset it multiple times and it did pop up to the 16 kilovolt uh, mode. But normally it pops up on 200 volt mode when you first power it on. Um, and I can't increase the voltage because the, incre the pot doesn't go in in the increase direction only goes in the decrease direction. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Catch you next time.